Hi, welcome to Bright Hope Creations. I'm Kara, and today we are celebrating Christmas in the great outdoors and the indoors too, featuring Lawn Fawn's window frame and the nitpicky winter six by six pad, snowball fight, over the mountain borders, winter village, just add glitter, a creature was stirring, window scene winter, and here I'm just using the sentiment, but I'm also using that frame and that scallop frame and Christmas dreams, some acetate, and the outside in stitched rectangle stackables. Here's some wood grain cardstock in light brown, and now here are all my pieces together. So I'm gonna use that outside inch stitched rectangle inside and a piece of the nitpicky winter as the wallpaper on the outside. Here's my window, there's that floor uh, baseboard. It's a little smaller than a quarter inch. I'm just seeing how it's all going to lie together. Lawn Fawn has a six inch ruler that has both the center as zero and then the normal way to have the ruler. So I'm using that to figure out how I want that window on there. And now I'm using that center zero to line up that rectangle and I'll mark it on the two sides and then up at the top as well. Just making sure that I really do have it where I want it. And then I'll mark that top edge and that will be my window opening. But I do want that window opening to go all the way through the card. So I'm going to put my wallpaper onto the note card. So this is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card and a piece of pattern paper the same size. So just line that up and make sure I've got it where I want it. Place the window die back on the pattern paper and tack that down with some low tack tape. This is that post-it tape and I'll send it through my big shot. And I did, and here it is. And we have a window. I'm adding some 1 8 inch double-sided tape all around that window opening so I can add my acetate. I don't know if you can see that, maybe with some of the glare you can see it. And then the window will go right over that. So I'm going to use some eighth inch double-sided tape again and put it on the window. And I don't have to go all the way around, so I'm just going to take a smaller piece on both sides, take off the release paper, and add my window frame. Now to finish off the inside of this card, the window part, I'm taking that scalloped frame and I put some double-sided tape on that as well. And then I'm just going to put that around that window. So it really doesn't do anything, but just say, hey, I finished that. It's It was a thought. <laughs> All right, well, I'm deciding how wide I want that floor on the bottom. And I think I wanna cut it off just about the same size as that baseboard. So I'm gonna trim that and then trim that baseboard down to the right length as well. So adding my wood green cardstock to the bottom and I'll use that eighth inch tape for the baseboard. Take off that release paper and add the baseboard. So we're building up our living room here. I love putting a scene like that on a card. I just think it's so simple because it's just lines but it adds a big punch i think it shows dimension without a lot of work <laughs> all right deciding how much of this curtain i want on the window because i'm going to have a scene outside and i want the scene to show through the window but i wasn't sure how much of the scene i wanted to see when you're looking at the front of the card. So I'm just putting on all of the curtain and then putting in some of the scene into the inside with the stamps and then deciding how much you can see and how much I want to show and taking my time just to figure out the different pieces now I want the mountains in the background and then a little village in front of that. 
So there's some perspective going on. So the mountains are small in the back, and then the village is a little bigger in the front. But in the very front, I'm going to have those snowball fight kids or mice. And so they're going to be larger. So it's all perspective. And I remembered that I had some extra mice already colored from my last project. If you saw that, it was my Christmas tags that I made. And uh, why not use them, right? So I took those out and I'm arranging them around. I think I'm going to stick with all gray mice for this one. So I've got my little gray guy over there and a little snowball. Let's see how it looks. Okay, I really don't think I want to hide too much of that scene or you really are just going to see that snow fort wall. And so I opted to go with just a valance. And we can say they have a roller shade behind that valance in case they need privacy. All right, well, here we are on the inside and I placed those stamps where I kind of wanted them in order to figure out where I wanted the village. And the village is gonna be stamped directly on the background as well as the mountains, but the village is going to be in front. So if you're masking something, it's always front first. So I used my jet black ink because I'm gonna use Copics and that's Copic friendly. And now I'm gonna take a piece of post-it paper and this is a full sticky post-it note. And I've got my acrylic block and I'm stamping out my village on there and I don't have to cut all of it out. I just really need the uh, roof lines so that my mountains can go over that and not stamp on top of it, on top of the stamped image. That makes sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you can see I'm just cutting those out, not being real careful with the bottom, and adding those roof lines there. Although, <laughs> I should have cut a little bit more off that corner because, as you can see, one of the lines of the mountain is going directly over that paper edge. <laughs> well, readjusting, making sure I like where those mountains are, if you saw them through the windows, and I'm happy with that. So pick that up on the misty door, ink that up with my jet black ink, and stamp it down, clean off my stamp, and we're ready to reveal that uh, one in front of the other. Always taking off the mask is always fun. It's like magic. <laughs> all right, well, that's the background. That's all set. And I'm going to color it, but I'm not going to focus on coloring the background today. I'm going to focus on coloring the little guys inside the house. So I'm just showing a little bit of coloring. So I used BV as my gray, so BV 20s and zeros uh, to kind of give it that look. And then also some B0000 and 000. So... <laughs> I stamped up the little guys inside, and now this table is the craft table from the stamp set Just Add Glitter. I used a bunch of different stamp sets today, and I know sometimes that can seem like, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> I don't have all those stamp sets. I know, there are so many ways to put stamp sets together with Lawn Fawn because all the sets kind of work together, so use what you have and uh, create a scene inside the house, create a scene outside the house. It doesn't need to be the same scene. And, uh, but I just love this craft table and chairs. They work so well. And then the tree and the cookies down below, those are from Christmas Dreams. I use Christmas Dreams a lot, but I usually use it for the rug in a room. I don't know. Anyway, didn't use that this time. But this gingerbread house and the little mouse standing with her apron on, now those are from A Creature with Stirring. So again, I'm using a lot of different sets, but use what you have and create a, a fun indoor scene and an outdoor scene. You could even just for the outdoor scene, 
stamp sentiment in there that you open it up and you can kind of see it through the window, but when you open it up, you see the full sentiment. So lots of different ways to go about this. All right, so I'm using some E-teens, which is kind of a redder brown for my gingerbread house and also the tree trunk of the Christmas tree. And I used E-20s for the table and the cookies. And then this is a YG-11 for the green little <laughs> little gumdrops, but also for that green tree. I'll use that. And then a YG-17, that's a lot darker. There is a, a middle YG teen, but I didn't use it. I actually ended up using a G teen for the middle color because um, it just seemed to work better for me. I don't know. The, the G's and YG's, I still play around with a lot. I don't have a particular um, way of using my YG's and G's as I color. I just still look at my chart and figure things out. But I like this YG11 because I think it goes well with the wallpaper. These mice have a nice Nordic wallpaper going on here. They must really like Christmas that they have that up all year long. Or maybe they just change out their wallpaper for the season. Eh, I don't know. Industrious mice, probably. <laughs> but you can see how I'm coloring this tree and putting the uh, shading underneath each of those sections and kind of fanning it out so that it looks darker underneath where the boughs kind of come forward and then lighter as you see more of them. And then just shading under all those baubles on the garland as well. There's that E11 for the tree trunk and a 17 to give it some texture. And I'm not shading too much on there because I want to keep that texture, but I will kind of blend it in with the lightest one. And I'm using that BV20. Now that's the gray, sort of, that I used on the mountains. So I'm going to bring it inside to gray up or to shade my whites. So this little apron and the paper and the milk and the snow on the little gingerbread house. So kind of keeping that the same, consistent. I'm adding in some red details with an R24 and 59. And I'm gonna keep this pretty simple color-wise uh, in the indoors uh, because there's a lot going on. So you can see what's going on outside and I didn't wanna detract with a lot of different colors. So this is a YR21 and I shade that with a YR23 and then pulling one more color from the outside in. I'm using the BV000 and 02 for just a couple of items, the gift and some of the baubles. I just didn't want the indoor colors to compete with the outdoor colors. Now the mice themselves are going to be cool gray. So C1 to find those shadows and then determine how dark I want to go, I decided I'd go to a C4. Usually I go up the line, oh, let's see about a C2 or C3, but I figured, all right, just just get to the C4 and then blend from there. He's a small guy, and so I want a, a real contrast from the darkest to lightest. So C4 to C2 to C0. And the other mouse kind of gets the same treatment little R21 for the nose and cheeks and ears. Color up one last gift. Uh, wrap one last present, I guess. <laughs> and then I wasn't sure what color I wanted the chairs, so I'm going to wait until after I cut everything out and set them in the room to decide. So I have the coordinating dies, and I'll cut out all the images on my big shot, and then time to arrange the room taking a look at everything together. It's a nice way to design uh, the fabric in, in your living room. Wish I could do that in my own living room, but decided those chairs could be red. I feel like that would balance out with the valance and make a bold statement in the room. <laughs> we have a red couch in our basement family room area. Uh, somebody had 
purchased two red leather couches and apparently his um <laughs> his fiance didn't care for them so they were in clearance in our local furniture store boy they have served us well we don't have a lot of different colors in the basement so having this bold red couch <laughs> actually it's it's kind of fun all right i'm using my tape runner to adhere everything so Pushed in that little chair, and here's the mouse working on the gingerbread house. Push in one more chair and set that guy there. He's kind of taking a break and looking back at his work. And the Christmas tree is off to the side. Now, maybe the presents should be under the tree, but I am putting them on the other side of the room to balance things out a bit. And the plate of cookies and milk, they're going to go by the tree because I just think it looks good that way. All right, I'm gonna clip off the tree where it hangs over the edge. And I slipped my outdoor scene into the card while I shade up this valance. So I'm using a cool gray too. And I decide I could go darker. So I use the cool gray four. And then I'm gonna come back in with the R24 to shade over that just to give it a little bit of depth in the folds of the valance. I'm using the jumbo glue tube to adhere that curtain rod to the valance and a little tape runner to add that valance to the window and now I can work on the outdoor scene. So here's what I have colored up and you can see where I had that line. I just found the nearest black marker and filled that in. So no big deal there. And I'm looking through the window to see where I'm going to put that snowball fight scene. So I kind of looking, opening and closing it. I did not adhere that outdoor scene yet because I still want to stamp the sentiment on the bottom. And I thought it'd be easier if I had it free to go into the misty instead of tacked down in my card in case I made a mistake. I had all those leftover images from my last project, the tags that I made, except a snowball. So we need a snowball in a snowball fight. And so I stamped one up quick and coloring that in with a BV000 and a C2 and then coordinating die. I will cut that out. And there's that snowball. Now I'm gonna put some sparkle glaze on this snowball matches the other snowballs that I have. And while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to stamp that sentiment on the inside. And this is from Window Scene Winter, and it says, wishing you a Merry Christmas. I'm making sure it's low enough that it doesn't show through the window. And in order to get it straight, I'm using Lawn Fawn's six inch ruler and I'm butting that up against my Misty, and then I'm putting the sentiment up against that. What I like about those Lawn Fawn sentiments is they are on rectangles, so a straight line. And I just can put that up to that ruler and then close the Misty door to pick up the stamp, and I know I have it straight. So ink that up with my jet black ink and stamp it down, and here is our sentiment. There's a little room to write underneath that sentiment, or you could also use the back of the card if you've got a lot to say. I'm going to use my tape runner and adhere this to the inside of the card. Oh, I'm going to wash the windows a little bit. <laughs> For the final touch, my snowball is dry and I can glue it into the scene. It is about to hit this little mouse right on the head. And I have the indoors on the outside of the card and the outdoors on the inside of the card. I'd like to think I was out there in the snowball fight, but I'm probably inside watching it happen. I hope you enjoyed the video today and it inspires you to make your own window scene. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!